There's a saying in architecture that you design your first house for an enemy, your second house for a friend, and your third house for yourself. And there really is a lot of truth to that. Good design takes time and experience. It takes failing a few times before you get things right. And here in Auckland, we're about to visit a tiny house that really goes to show that practice can make perfect. Hi Shay, how's it going? Hey Bryce, good, how are you? I'm great and it's lovely to see you again. Yeah, you too. It's hard to believe that it's actually been seven years now since we first met. Yeah, so when I first met you, I was living in Lucy, which is a green tiny house. I think it's one of the first ones you filmed. And I was living there with Tom, who's my ex, but still a good friend. And Hazel was nearly on the way, who's my daughter. So yeah, um, yeah, lots changed since then. and. Me and Tom, our relationship changed to a friendship and me and Hazy moved out and we moved around and did the whole renting thing, kind of trying to find my feet again, I guess. And after a couple of years of renting was just like, nah, screw it, I'm done with this, getting back into my tiny house. And so designed and built this one. So yeah, and then we've been here for about eight months and absolutely loving it, absolutely loving it. And building this tiny house, this is part of a bigger story because you actually have started a business constructing tiny homes, haven't you? Yeah, so after I built Lucy, which was my first tiny house seven years ago, I just loved the process of it so much and saw how it changed my life and wanted to build more. So just designed and built one and then sold it and it kind of evolved from there into a business of designing and constructing tiny houses, which I love. It's my passion, so I feel very lucky to be able to work in it as well. But being a full-time mum, a business owner wasn't enough for you. You had to become a professional diver as well. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I unexpectedly got back into springboard diving, which I did as a teenager. It was a passion of mine back then, and I had to stop because I suffered from really bad eating disorders as a teenager. And so kind of had to choose between, well, it felt back then like my life or, or my sport, and, and I chose to stop and, and focus on getting well. And by the time I recovered, I was 21, and thought that I was too old to get back into elite sport so instead waited until I was 30 and then um, got back into it three years ago unexpectedly but it, that's been an incredible journey as well so yeah got fully back into it and have loved it. And now let's talk about the house because in this design you can really see that you have had a lot of practice over the last Thank seven you. years. Thank you. Well actually this design my mum helped me design it so it's extra special in that sense that um, it was a real collaboration between me and her. And I feel like I kind of pulled all the things that I loved and learned in all the previous builds and brought it together for what I wanted in this space. And as well as having my mum's input, which was amazing as well. So yeah, it's been a pretty special process creating this little home. So tell me about the design of this home. So I wanted to keep it easy to move on the roads in the sense that the height is well within limit, it's 4.25. The width is 2.8 and the length is 8.5 with a little bit of an extra angled area over the drawbar. So yeah, it was a bit bigger than what I'd done you know, in the past, but I felt like still quite a nice size that was easy to transport. And um, I wanted this house to kind of see me through the years. I don't want to have to move out in a couple of years' time if I have more children or if I'm in a relationship where, you know, there's a blended family situation. So I wanted to future-proof it in that sense, which is why I've designed this sort of like add-on module, which is the room you can see behind. And basically that's um, accessed through the French doors on the front, but also through an external door on the tiny house itself. And we've just parked this porch and the little room right up against the tiny house. So it kind of gives you the feeling of, uh, of it being one space. And that was kind of me future-proofing the house. And, you know, if I needed to in five, ten years down the line, I could make that even bigger. It could be two tiny houses up against each other type thing. So it just added that flexibility in it for me because, I mean, the last seven years have shown me I don't <laughs> know exactly where life is going. So I like to have flexibility built into whatever I do, really. And that enabled that. So that was a key part of the design in this one. And with this layout as well, you've also managed to create a really nice veranda area and to capitalise on this beautiful parking spot that you found for your home as well. Yeah, I mean, a porch, a veranda, it goes a long way in just giving you that dry space. It's not critical or essential, but it does just make it that much more livable. And it's pretty easy to build a porch. So it's, um, you know, kind of a, a big bonus. We love it. We use it a lot. 
And the home is cedar and ironclad. Very classic and always a really good look, isn't it? I know, and I build so many with this sort of combo because it looks so nice. And I was like, I'm going to do something different for my house. And then I didn't because <laughs> it looks so good. So I went with this combo, um, the colour steel and the cedar. And then I've got the river Totara decking, which is really an interesting feature. And that's from the rivers up north where... 150 years ago they were doing a lot of logging and they'd always lose some of the timber as they were transporting it down the rivers. So now there's a few companies bringing up those old timbers, restoring the waterways and then drying it out and it's this really cool product. And so we've used River Totra for the decking and on the inside we've done everything in River Rimu. So it's quite a cool little, you know, a little bit of history there. Beautiful. <laughs> and you have to tell me about this parking spot because this property is really something quite special, isn't it? Yeah, well, I just feel so lucky and so grateful. And sometimes I just kind of almost have to pinch myself that this is my real life. It's actually a listed garden. Um, so there's quirky, funky, cool plants all over the property. It's 50 or 60 acres or something. Wow. And this is just like a little, they call it the forgotten corner. So yeah, I feel so, so lucky to be here. And it's a piece of paradise, really. And then you've carried that beauty and the landscape around us into the home as well. You've got all of these wonderful plants and the green roof is seriously cool. Can you tell me about that? Thank you. Yeah, so I felt like, I, I mean, I'm obsessed with plants. I love plants. And I felt like I really wanted the tiny house to respect the landscape and blend in nicely. And so part of that was having a lot of plants in the landscaping of the tiny house, but also having the living roof on the porch, I felt would just help it blend in. And I've always loved living roofs. It was kind of like my dream home would always have a living roof. So I thought, well, this is my dream home. I'm going to do it. And the idea is that as the years go by, the plants will just sort of drip from the sides of the roof and just hang down, sort of creating almost a bit more privacy and that feeling like it's sort of been taken over by the landscape. I really, I really like that. So. <laughs> and then the outdoor tub. Oh, yeah. Well, that actually is um, quite a new feature. It's always been in the, in the plans, but just got it set up in the last week or so. So last night was actually my first outdoor tub experience and it was so good, it was amazing. So yeah, I feel pretty lucky and pretty stoked to have the setup that we have. Well, this home is just so beautiful. From the exterior, I can see so many unique features. I love the green roof and this wonderful outdoor living addition. Thank you. And I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Yeah, totally, let's go. All right, after you. <laughs> Oh, this is incredible. Look at that green wall. Thank you. <laughs> I'm such a fan of plants inside the house and that just creates such a stunning feature in the home, doesn't it? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love it. It's kind of like that wall was always gonna be for an artwork of some sort and I thought, well, what better artwork than what nature has provided us with? So that's why it became my plant wall. There's nothing like living art, is there? Yeah. <laughs> so when you were designing this home, what were some of the features in here that were really important to you? What did you absolutely have to have in here? So for me, the living wall. <laughs> of course. My living roofs. Okay, and they're the planty things out the way. But also it had to work for me and my daughter in terms of giving us both privacy. Although like I love it to pieces, I love to be able to close the door and be like, you know, now it's, now it's my own space. So both of our rooms have closing doors which was really important to me, and also safety as well. I didn't want to have to worry about her walking up a ladder, or, or me, probably more me coming up and down a ladder. And so the stairs were important, the balustrade between the two rooms was important. I didn't want to have to spend my time worrying, because mums worry, that's what we, we do sometimes with our kids. So I wanted to reduce that. Um, and having lived in a tiny house before with Hazel when she was really little, I knew that that design didn't work for a family. So I wanted to take the things that I'd learned and really make sure that this was a safe, well-designed family home. And um, yeah, so those were some of the, the key things. It was more about how me and Hazel would live in this space. And immediately entering, we are now in your lounge. Tell me about this space. So this space here, I just wanted a nice view out onto whatever. I mean, I didn't know what the view would be at the time when I started building because I didn't have my land yet. But I just wanted a nice view out onto nature, whatever you know that view ended up being. I got these beautiful big bifolding doors put in as well, which means that I can totally open up this space and it just really brings the outside in. And in summer, we have them open the whole time and it makes the space feel absolutely massive. And yeah, just a nice big couch. Like that was it basically that you know I can hang out on with Hazy, with friends. And then you've got a projector for watching movies and stuff? Yes, yeah, so I've got a projector which I just pop on the windowsill and then it projects up onto that blind and it turns the whole space into a movie room, which is quite cool. It's a great <laughs> way to do it. And then over here we have your kitchen and 
wow, this is stunning. Thank you. And admittedly, um, I probably enjoy looking at it more than I enjoy cooking in it because I just am not the best cook. But I do like, you know, I do want to learn. So this is like my motivation to learn how to cook well. Well, if any kitchen <laughs> can inspire someone to cook, it's going to be this one. Look yeah. at this. <laughs> the river table here is absolutely exquisite. Thank you. I've got the most amazing cabinetry making team. And they're super clever and they were into making this river table and we wanted to kind of pay tribute to the timber used in this house which is River Rimu and River Totra which comes from the rivers up north. It's 150 years old, it's been submerged so that's a pretty cool story and I wanted to represent that with this river table so that's why we decided to put that in there. And then I really love how that celebration of the timber is completely continued into the kitchen. And I mean, look at that sink. Thank you. Yep, that sink is, uh, it took me a couple of weeks to use it. <laughs> and then once I kind of christened it, I was like, you know, I use it like a normal sink now. But it's actually, I'm finding it super cool because it's got so many colors in it, you don't notice the little aging marks that you'd normally get in the sink. So yeah, a lot of people sort of wonder if a timber sink is practical but it's right. actually really cool so it's aging really well it certainly is yeah. and then you can see there's a lot of storage which has been built into this kitchen as well yeah so i mean there's more storage than i need there's empty cupboards but yeah plenty of storage and sort of space for me to develop my cooking skills as time goes on <laughs> so I'll work on that one but yeah there's heaps of storage and this will be eventually um, my washer dryer um, area so my little laundry will be in there as well as some food storage but at the moment I just use the laundromat. And the use of mirrors here in the kitchen is really nice as well it just adds a little bit of light and a sense of spaciousness doesn't it? Yeah so the mirrors um, we backed this uh, pantry sort of shelf pantry with it and it sort of tricks the eye into feeling like the space goes a lot further because what I often say with tiny house design is that our brains like to feel like we have a lot of space, but the reality is, is that we don't actually need a lot of space. It's just the feeling. So it's kind of tricking your brain into, into sensing that space that isn't actually even there. So yeah, mirrors can be handy with that. It certainly can, very clever. And then I really love what you've done here with this wonderful bay window type extension of your kitchen counter. Thank you. So yeah, this feature is actually here because of a walkway that's upstairs, which enables you to walk around the bedroom. So we were going to have this lowered area around here, which I didn't want to be part of the main kitchen. So that's why it's sort of a bench top that we don't use that often. It's a little awkward to reach right with the way to the end, but it's still quite functional. And then underneath it is just some storage. Um, and also because of this walkway area here, we couldn't have a conventional extractor fan. So we've got the pop-up one, which is quite cool. In every tiny house I design, we go for full-size normal appliances. So yeah, normal four um, burner gas hob and then nice wall oven microwave, because yes, I do use them sometimes. <laughs> um, and then a decent sized fridge. So yeah, it's all very sort of, you know, good sized um, appliances, which are nice and easy to use. And so what do we have down the other end of the home? Um, so it's our bathroom and the spare room. We'll have a look at the spare room first. So this I was touching on when we were outside. Basically the spare room and the deck are separate from the tiny house and just parked right up against it. But I put this exterior door on the tiny house to allow access into the spare room, which makes it future-proofed. So yeah, we can go through here and into the spare room. Very <laughs> clever. And you can see how this concept can really work just for completely expanding it in the future. But right now it's giving you a nice office space, a nice spare room. Yeah, exactly. So this pulls out into a double bed and it's just a space to like watch movies on the computer basically. And admittedly, we don't use it a heck of a lot. We're mostly in that side, but it's more just the future proofing aspect that I really like. But for now, it's like it's actually more than we even need. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. It does. And then through here, we've got your bathroom. Yeah. So here, here's our bathroom. This is lovely and super spacious for a tiny house bathroom, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's bigger than a lot of the bathrooms I've had in the past. And we've got the double vanity, which is more there for symmetry than anything else. Like, I, you know, me and Hazy actually, we just use the same one. And I just wanted it to look really clean and pretty. And so I hid all the ugly stuff behind these cupboards, which is actually a part of the stairs. So when you open this up, it's just my laundry. Um, and then I've got this roll out composting toilet. That is very Which, clever. <laughs> I can tuck away and you know the ugly stuff is gone. So you do your business, you put sawdust over it. I've actually got like this coffee um, husk stuff that I use. And you know, no water. It's really environmentally friendly and so easy and low cost as well. Being able to hide it away like that is just such a clever idea. Exactly, because you know composting loos, they're not necessarily the prettiest things. And that way it's just out of sight and you can have a nice clean bathroom. 
And then your shower over here, beautiful tile work. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted a nice serene bathroom and so a tiled shower, like it's a decent size, 900 by 900. Eventually I'll get a shower glass on it one day, but yeah, it's just a, just sort of adds to the nice, clean, uh, simple space really. It certainly does. And then should we have a look upstairs? Yep, let's go on. It really is great how both your room and Hazy's room are joined by this walkway. This is really a clever addition, isn't it? What we wanted to create was a feeling of taking a journey to your room. So again, that tricks your brain into thinking that there's that it's a bigger space because instead of just going up a ladder in your in your sleeping space, you know, you have to go upstairs, walk through a hallway, past the living wall, and then you're in your room. And it really does sort of trick your mind into feeling that the space is bigger than it is. Yeah. And of course, it adds that important safety element, which is really important to me. It looks like you're actually able to stand up in there as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. You want to come on up? Yeah, let's do it. So I don't know if you can stand up in here, Bryce, because you're taller than, um, <laughs> than oh, most people. Oh, it's close. Not but, quite. But you close. can see how having this area up here really does just add an incredible sense of space up here, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it really does. And you can adjust it depending on, on the height of whoever's going to be living here. So you could get six foot five, six foot six even in this walkway. So yeah, I designed this walkway space so that I could easily stand in here. I'm about 170 and um, yeah, designed it so that, you know, a boyfriend of six one, six two could stand too. <laughs> future boyfriend. There you go. <laughs> Still thinking of future proofing. I like it. <laughs> Exactly. And then this is Hazy's room through here, is it? Yeah, this is my little my little monkey's room. <laughs> this is seriously cute. Thank you. Yep, this is little Hazy's room. Yeah. So we are above the bathroom right now. Yeah, exactly. Above the bathroom and because we've got a, you know, like a sort of regular ceiling height in the bathroom, this is a proper loft size bedroom, which I figured for Hazy was all good. She's five, she'll be fine in here for a, quite a lot longer. And then this is really wonderful for Hazel as well, isn't it? She's got her clothes there, lots of storage space, places yeah. for all of her toys. Yeah, exactly. So she's got a little desk for um, drawing on, playing, um, her little trinkets, like, you know, whatever she sort of collects. And it's really cool coming in here and seeing how she decorates things and what's taking pride of place on that particular day. So, yeah, it's nice for her to have her, her zone. She loves this little space. It's her little sanctuary, her little her place to put her mark on, which is really cool. And then your bedroom is down the other end. Should we take a look? Yeah, let's go have a look. Okay. This is seriously cool and super clever. So this bed platform, this is actually the kitchen ceiling, isn't it? Yeah, so any part of this room that's raised is the kitchen ceiling, and any part that's lowered is areas of the kitchen that didn't need to be full height, so cabinetry above the stove, above my little bump-out area. So yeah, that's how we got the ability to walk upright in the master bedroom while still keeping the tiny house build at 4.25 metres. So yeah, all within the height regulations, but a really nice feeling, really easy to use bedroom. So. That is very, <laughs> very impressive. And again, you've built a tremendous amount of storage in here, haven't you? Yeah, so I wanted full height wardrobes and heaps of storage. I could have had more, but I actually don't have enough clothes to fill up my cupboards. So I decided to have that little area with my chair, some pictures, and, um, and then dedicate that side of the room to storage. So yeah, in my room, there's more space than I need. I've got, you know, like spare blankies and clothes and... Um, doing the whole Marie Kondo style, um, rolling up your clothes, and it, it saves a lot of space. So I've even got some empty drawers, and then I keep like undies and togs and stuff down just in those lift up lids, which is the cavity between the um, kitchen ceiling and my floor. So yeah, just trying to make use of all the little bits of space that I can. And then it's really nice how you've added the mirror here behind the bed as well. It just adds a tremendous feeling of depth and space in the loft. Thank you, yeah, and I mean, obviously I wanted the feeling of space, the mirrors add, um, and you really can't go wrong with a mirror in a bedroom, can you? So. <laughs> I suppose you can't, no, fair uh, enough. But mostly the space, mostly the feeling of space, and it reflects my garden, which is beautiful, like from here where I'm standing, I see my garden like twice as big, so yeah, I love it. It gets comments, but I love it. <laughs> totally worth it, I'm sure. <laughs> Definitely. And again, that garden outside the window, it's just a complete celebration of colour. I just love the vibrance that it pulls into the room. Yeah, and it's quite interesting because you sometimes forget you're in a second story bedroom. It feels like you're almost in like a basement type room with a window out onto the garden. But it's just constantly changing, constantly attracting different insects and different wildlife. 
And yeah, I love it. I love my rooftop garden. It's definitely, you know, a part of the home that I, that I spend a lot of time looking at. So you've been living in the home now for about eight months. Mm -hmm. How's the space working out for you? Oh, honestly, like I thought there may be a bit of an adjustment getting back into used to tiny house living, but there hasn't even been an adjustment. It's just been, it's been amazing. And I've just felt so blessed that this is my home and I love every part of it. So yeah, it's worked out better than I could have even hoped. And this house, there is a lot going on in here. There's a lot of really clever utilization of space, lots of really high quality materials. Can you talk to me about the budget that was involved in building this? Yep, so for the house, not counting the porch and the little room, uh, I spent around the 150 New Zealand marks, about 150 grand, which for a, a house of this sort of spec, I was really happy with. So this house for me, it's a place of stability for me and Hazy. It's our place, it's our sanctuary. And no matter how life changes, because I've seen for myself that life can change unexpectedly, this is our base and it's ours. And that, as a mum, gives me such peace of mind knowing that for my daughter I've got a beautiful home. Shay, it's been really lovely seeing you again. Your home that you've built for you and your daughter is just absolutely beautiful. I love all of the colour and art and life that you've poured into this place. Thank you so much for sharing You're that You're welcome. Me. Thanks for coming around, Bryce. My <laughs> pleasure. There's so much attention to detail and truly brilliant design which has been poured into this home. But really, a house is all about the people who live inside it. It's all about a space which caters to the needs of the unique individuals who make this place home. And that is what this house truly does so very well. This is a marvel of design, a true achievement in creating a space that just works beautifully.